Hi everyone, so today I thought I would try something a bit different because you guys know that I'm a big fan of capsule wardrobes. I've had a capsule wardrobe now for over a year and I just love it. I love how minimal the approach is, I love how I don't shop as much as I used to and I love that getting up in the morning it's not so much of a headache as to know what to wear because it's definitely a more thought out edit of clothing. If you want to know more about it I have a playlist on the whole thing from start to finish on how I created my capsule wardrobe to kind of the seasonal changes I've made and I'll make sure that is linked up somewhere but today I thought I would give my makeup collection the same capsule treatment. Now it's not going to be the same as my capsule wardrobes because I've streamlined my makeup down a lot recently. If you guys watch my makeup decluttering videos, again another video I'll make sure is linked somewhere, then you'll know that I don't have a lot of makeup these days nor do I buy an absolute shed load like I used to. So I'm not going to impose any rules or regulations on it. It's more I just wanted to see what I could get my everyday stash down to because you guys will know that I keep the majority of stuff in my other room in my like apothecary drawers and that has all of my beauty products in but I have this in my bedroom and this houses all of my like everyday makeup so I kind of switch it around every now and again this is from Oliver Bonus unfortunately they don't sell it anymore it's been discontinued but it's very similar to things that you can buy in Muji it's got a little flappy top little drawer here it kind of fits in the perfect amount of everyday makeup and I just wanted to create a little capsule that I could do every makeup look that I enjoy doing with and get it down to the most minimum amount of products that'd be really good for beginners if you just want to know where to start really good for travel because I think it's only 16 pieces in total which is fab but it also kind of doubles up as like a ride and die tag you know that's been going around on YouTube recently this is the stuff that I really 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 love so it's a bit of a three in one I hope you like it and I'm going to get started with base so I would suggest picking up a primer and obviously that is going to depend on your skin and your personal needs. If you've got a lot of redness you could look for a green tinted one. If you're quite dehydrated then something with a bit of dewiness in is really good. Or if you're quite greasy something that's mattifying and is going to increase the longevity of your base is what you want to go for. So there's lots of different ones out there. Personally for me I'm a little bit dry combination and I like my skin to be very glowy. So I like hydrating ones and I love the Too Faced Hangover RX Replenishing Face Primer. This to me it's just my favourite primer that I think I've ever tried. It basically feels like another layer of moisturiser. It's very thick, but in a good way. It just makes my skin feel very hydrated, very moisturised, and it doesn't interfere too much with the makeup that I put on top of it. Now base is again a bit of a tough one, and it's going to be something that depends on you and your needs and what you like in a base. I've tried to pick one that is good for quite a low coverage, light everyday, kind of dewy fresh on the skin, but can be built up to a pretty full coverage. I think it's really good to have one of those foundations in your stash because it just is very multitasking, it means you're not constantly reaching for other formulas. Something that can do a bit of everything is what you want. And for me, that is this. This is the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better CC Cream. It's great, it's got SPF 50 in it. I personally use the shade Fair in the winter and then light in kind of the summertime. But I just think this is a great one because you can literally dot on a tiny, tiny, tiny amount just where you need it if you want quite a light coverage or you can really pack it on if you want more of a full coverage. Now, if you're only gonna have one concealer again you want it to be very multitasking and you want it to be able to cover redness and blemishes but also dark circles as well and I know there'll be some people that are like no you need separate things for that and you kind of do but I think you can go for something that's either quite dry something like the Laura Mercier secret camouflage is great because it's a little compact comes with two colors it's extremely dry so works really well for blemishes and just general areas of the face but under the eye it requires a bit of work but you can just blend it with a bit of eye cream pop it underneath so I think that that one works really well. I haven't got that with me today. Instead I've gone to like the other side of the spectrum and this is the Glossier Stretch Concealer in the shade Light 10 and I like this because it is so thin, it's so fresh on the skin, it's so easy to blend in that it works beautifully under the eyes but also again on blemishes. I've got a huge one on my face right now, like it is massive. Nothing would perfectly clear this up so I'm quite happy just to have it, you know, it's there, I've got a blemish, it's fine. I think this does a really good job of kind of covering covering everything but in a very natural way that doesn't make it look like you've got a mask and who cares you've got a spot on your chin we've all had them from time to time now when it comes to face powders and colors I had a think and I was like I think I've come up with the perfect solution here and they are the hourglass palettes because they basically have a setting powder in a bronzer blusher and highlight they've got a bit of everything this is the one from last year this is their ambient lighting edit this is the one from this year which is the ambient lighting edit in the shade surreal light and I actually think when I look inside of them I prefer the shades 
in the original one because it has this colour here which I think is called Diffused Light which is a very nice pale yellow shade which works really well for me because I've got quite a lot of redness in my skin. But this year's one is a nice offering as well. If you've got last year's you definitely don't need this year's. They're very similar as you can see. But I do think they're a great option in terms of being very compact, being very multitasking and basically having everything that you need for the face in there, aside from contour, which we'll go into in a minute. So here I applied a bit of diffused light all over the face. This is from the original palette. This is the yellowy powder all over the face just to set things. And then I added a bit of contour. We're we'll going to that in a minute. And then I just popped some of the bronzer on, which is the shade Luminous Bronze Light. And then I went in with some of the blusher, actually from the newer palette, Blush in Surreal Glow. That is gorgeous. That's a very like tart, exposed, kind of pinky, mauvey shade. And then I just finished off with a bit of the highlight from this one as well, which is the strobe powder again in Surreal Strobe Light. The one thing they can't do though is contour. And again, this is gonna depend on your skin tone and kind of what you like out of a contour. Some people like them more cool. Some people like them a bit more warm. Personally, I go for extremely cool because I have a very, very round face and I need all the kind of structure I can get. So something that really does create that shadow on my face is what I need. And for me, the Kevin Aquan Sculpting Powders, they now come in three shades. There's a light, medium and deep. And I use the shade medium. I just think they're the best. I just apply it with kind of a chiseled brush under my cheekbones, like where my cheekbones would be. And then I just blend it out with a beauty blender or here I've got the Real Technique sponge and just give that a little kind of pat in as you go. But I think they are really, really good. And because it is matte, it also doubles up as a matte eyeshadow. So you will see later on, I've got an eyeshadow palette to show you and it doesn't have a ton of matte shades in, but this can always be used on the eyes, sometimes even in the brows, like depending what shade your brows are. So a very multitasking product, I think. Okay, on to eyes, and the first thing is brows. Now, personally, I have huge eyebrows. They don't need too much help in the definition sense. So I haven't included an eyebrow pencil here, but you may wish to if your eyebrows are a little bit more less beefy than mine. Personally, I really like brow gels because not only are they good for the brows, you can also use them as like a bottom lash mascara. They're really good at adding a bit of separation and definition there. And for that, I'm using the Glossier Boy Brow in the shade Brown. You'll notice there's a lot of Glossier going on here. I'm a bit of a fan. I'm a recent convert, but here it has a tiny, tiny little brush and I'm just applying that through my brows just to kind of stick them down more than anything else so they don't go a bit crazy. I haven't included an eyeshadow primer here because I haven't got one at the moment that I really like. I'm using the Too Faced one and I just don't think it's that great. My personal favourite is the NARS Smudge Proof Pro Prime Eyeshadow, you know the one. So I'm going straight into eyeshadow products here. Now I do think it is really nice to have a cream eyeshadow product. Personally, they're my favourite because you can just throw them on. They're so easy to apply, you can do it with your fingers and they create a really nice base for powder eyeshadows as well and they can act as a bit of a primer. And my favourite one is the MAC Pro Longwear Paint Pot in the shade Groundwork. I just think this is a gorgeous, gorgeous colour. On deeper skin tones, it's just going to act as a bit of a primer, but if you've got a paler skin tone like me, it just gives like a really relaxed shadow, I woke up like this kind of eye. So, got a lot of love for that but obviously you're gonna want a palette. And this was hard to pick one palette, so I've kind of technically picked two, <laughs> but unfortunately one of them is sold out everywhere. So we'll go through that one in a bit, but I really like the Zoeva Cocoa Blend Palette. I think this is probably my favorite eyeshadow palette. When you put them all next to each other, I got all of them out. I don't own a lot, I have about seven. And when I compared them all, this was the one that I was like, I can do any eyeshadow look with that. It's got a nice mix of mattes, a nice mix of shimmers in there. It's extremely warm, so if you're into warm toned eyeshadows, you're gonna like this. They do have options for cooler shades and kind of more neutral shades, and it's gonna depend what kind of eye look you like to do. I either do barely anything on the eye, something like matte brown work, or I go in with a more like red toned shade. I love, I mean this one here, I think it's called Warm Notes is gorgeous, but these two are matte and they create a really gorgeous matte look. Kind of similar to what I've got on my eyes right now, so if you can't get what I'm about to talk about, this is definitely a semi-ish good dupe, especially when you add the Kevin Aquan into the mix as well. But what I used on my eyes today, and actually what I used in my vlog, a lot of people were asking what my eyeshadow look in the vlog was that I did a couple of weeks ago, a week or two ago, and it's this, it's this, it's from the Chanel palette, this is their Candor Experience. That was awful. <laughs> this was from their autumn winter collection that I have a feeling is annoyingly sold out. If I can find it anywhere available online, I will link it down below for you. Definitely one to check out on counter if you're going past, but it's basically just got four matte shades in and I just love this pale camel color. I just put that all over the eyes of the MAC 217 and then I take the slightly 
ready like MAC espresso-y type shade just into the crease of the MAC 224 just like blend it out a bit and then I take the darker brown and apply that with a Zoeva pencil brush just on the lash line. Now I have got two eyeliners here and I haven't worn either of them today because I did that like little bit of eyeshadow blendiness on the outer corners but I love a good eyeliner especially this nude one. This is the MAC chromographic pencil in the shade NC15 to NW20. This works really well on the lash line just to brighten things up. It's just like a flesh colored eyeliner. If you're very tired, if you've been up all night watching Stranger Things, you need this on the lash line. And because it is flesh colored, it also doubles up as a really good concealer. So if you've got a really stubborn one like I have, you can always just pop it on that and blend it in with your finger. It's kind of a very thick concealer, but it does work. And then I've got the MAC, ooh. Another MAC product. I feel like MAC just do really good eyeliners. This is their Modern Twist Kajal Eyeliner in the shade Groundbreaker. This is all I've really been wearing on my lash line for the last couple of months. Lily got me into it. It's a gorgeous bronze. It smudges really well, but then once it smudges, it doesn't move. It's extremely long lasting, and it's a really nice, warm, bronzy shade. So if I'm not wearing anything on my eyes and I want a bit of definition, this is a really good one to go for. Ah yes, mascara. Mascara is a bit of a tough one, especially since I've had my lash lift. I've been a bit more of a floozy when it comes to mascara. I'm not pining over the L'Oreal Telescopic Waterproof Mascara <laughs> as much as I used to, but I do still like waterproof formulas. I've been trying non-waterproof formulas recently, and although I I don't need them to like hold the curl like I used to. I find that they just make such a mess if they're non-waterproof. I've got quite oily eyes. I'm always like touching my eyes, touching my eyelids. And so they just go everywhere and I look like a panda like half an hour later. But the one I'm using at the moment is the Clinique High Impact Waterproof Mascara. Obviously pick whatever formula you like. You might want something that's a little bit more separating, a bit more volumizing. To me, this is quite a standard mascara. There's sort of nothing special about it, but it does not budge, which is very important to me. But if you have any current mascara favorite, then let me know, I would love to hear. Give me a recommendation below because I'm definitely in the market. Onto the fun bit, which is lips. And I think I changed these around like 10 times because I had about 15 lip products. I was like, you don't need 15 lip products, Anna. And I just ended up with four products I can basically do all the lip looks that I like to do with. The first one is the Clarins Instant Light Natural Lip Perfector in the shade 07. This for me doubles up as a balm because it's just so hydrating and moisturizing on the lips, so it negates the need of like an extra lip balm, which is great. But it just adds a very nice, like, nude, natural gloss to the lips. It's like a my lips but better kind of thing. Then when it comes to actual lipsticks and colours, go for what you fancy. Pick what you normally use. For me, I've got three colour families that I stick to, and that is nude, reds, and berries. Yeah, you see where I'm going here. So for my nude, I've got a ton that I love. I love Chanel Adrienne. I love MAC Patisserie. There is definitely more. Oh, the Charlotte Tilbury Very Victoria is really pretty. But recently, I wouldn't say this is like my holy grail nude, but recently I've really been enjoying this and it is the MAC Lip Tensity Lipstick in the shade Doe. I'm applying it here and you can just see it's quite like a brownie nude, but it's very similar to my natural lip color. And I like that just applied very lightly and smushed in. And it is also quite matte and I find that this would also work really well as a cheek color, even like an eye color in a pinch. Because it is quite creamy and because it is quite thick, it would double up as like an all over multi-stick for sure, which is why I went for that one. Then for bold lipsticks, I just don't think you can go wrong with a matte pencil format lip color because you don't need a lip pencil. That ticks another product off the list that you don't need to pack, which is fab. And I just think that something that is matte is gonna be the most long lasting. And when you've got a really bold lip color on your lips, you just don't wanna be thinking about it. So of course, I've gone for the NARS Velvet Matte Lip Pencils. I really am enjoying Mysterious Red at the moment. This is a new purchase. I haven't used this much before, but it's very similar to what I've got on my nails today. I don't know if you can see that. On my nails today is Smith & Colt Kundalini Hustle. Kundalini Hustle? I think that's what it's called. But actually on my lips today, I've got Damned. Dams to me is just awesome. I put it on, I'm like, yes, I am ready. But these two lip colors have me down. This and the MAC, ready to go. I feel like that was really rambly, but hopefully you enjoyed it. So those are just my top picks in case you're wanting to like streamline things down or you're traveling, or you just wanna create like a little capsule collection. Those would be the categories and the products that I would pick. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I will link up my latest video here for you. Also the subscribe button if you haven't already and a blog post to go with this video that has my top storage tips in. So definitely check that out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on Wednesday with a brand new video. Bye.